Pandas is an amazing library for smaller data sets. But as your data set sizes increase, what do you use? Well, you switch over to Polars. Polars is a lightning fast data frame library that is implemented in Rust. It basically uses a columnar data storage. It is based on lazy evaluation and it allows parallel processing which gives it superpowers to work with large data sets. In this video, I'll show you the recent launch of Rapids QDF that powers Polars to run on a GPU. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the video. Given that we want to accelerate the performance of Polars using a GPU, the first piece of code that I'll write is to check if I have a GPU or not. So I'm carrying out this entire activity on Google Colab and currently I have a Tesla T4 allocated to me. There's a very famous data set called as flight delay data set, which is what I'll refer to in this particular example. So let me quickly download the entire data set in this particular Google Colab session. I have the entire data set in form of a zip file readily available with me right now. All I have to do next is I basically have to unzip this particular file and reach my data set. So I'll quickly unzip this particular zip file as well. In this particular activity, I only require the combines underscore flights underscore 2018 CSV file. So I can stop the unzipping process. So if I show you the file structure currently, so this is the file that I'll utilize for the analysis going forward. So given that I want to accelerate Polars using GPU, what I'll do is I'll upgrade Polars to 1.5 irrespective of the initial version present on my Google Colab session and I'll install QDF Polars CU12 version. Now this is a separate wheel file that I'm kind of using before the launch given that I'm creating this video before the actual launch but when I share this code across you will have to execute this line as it is without the need for using this particular wheel file. So I'll quickly run this cell to install all the requirements that I have. Now the installation is all in place let's move forward. The only pending piece of installation that is remaining right now is a package called as IPython auto time. So with every cell that I execute, I want to show you the speed up that you can achieve by executing the Polars code on a GPU, which is where this particular package will come in really handy. So now with every execution, you'll be able to see a time variable here, which clearly depicts the time taken for that particular execution to happen. Now let's move on to the import section. So first things first, I'll kind of import Polars as PL and I'll also import assert underscore frame underscore equal function from Polars testing. So I'll quickly run this cell. In order to get better readable output, I'm kind of using this particular piece of code. So I'll quickly run this. The Polars version that you require is at least 1.5.0. So let's check what the current version is. Anything below this does not have the rapid QDF acceleration. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's now go forward and read the data set. So I'll quickly unhide the cell. Before we jump and see the operations that we want to perform using Polars and also look at the accelerated version of Polars. The one thing that I want to start off with is actually computing the size of the data set that I have. So if you see here, it's this particular file that I'm kind of interested in, which is combined underscore flights underscore 2018 dot CSV. Okay. I'll quickly run the cell to discover the size of this particular file. So let me run the cell. So this currently occupies 1.86 GB. So it's a huge file as you can see. It's huge in terms of size and if I have to carry out operations, if I do it using pandas, then the entire higher experience would be very sluggish, which is where you're using polars. Polars will be super quick, but to accelerate it even further is where rapid QDF support comes in really handy. Now let me first scan the CSV file using the polars scan underscore CSV command. 
So this operation takes 37.4 milliseconds. If I show you the schema, these are the overall columns that exist. So you have a flight date column, which is a string column, and then you have multiple other columns as well. Just to give you a sense of the data, I'll quickly run this particular piece of code as well. Polars works on lazy evaluation, which is where if I want to view the first five rows of this particular data frame, I call the head function and then I call the collect function. So I'll quickly run this cell. So just to give you a heads up, this is how the entire data set looks like. So you have flight date, airline, the origin of the flight, the destination of the flight, whether the flight was cancelled, whether it was diverted, etc. So all of these data points exist and I'm dealing with a data set which is around 2 GB. Okay, so a fairly large data set with large number of columns as well as large number of rows. Let me now show you the amount of time each operation takes using polars. Okay. So if I go here and if I show you the data set here, I have this particular column called as airtime. So airtime is basically the airtime of that particular aircraft on that particular day. So that is what is recorded here. And if I want to count the overall airtime across all airlines in 2018, so I'll have this particular command. So imagine going through the entire data set, picking out every row summing it together and then collecting the result and then displaying it. So it's a pretty computationally expensive operation. Let's see the amount of time it takes for polars to execute this. So let me quickly run this. Keep in mind one thing that the entire process using pandas would have taken a lot of time. But here polars again, given that it is developed on rust takes around four seconds, which is fairly quick for such a big data set, right? But now if I want to accelerate polars without changing a single line of code, again, again, if you have an existing polars workflow, all you have to do is introduce something called as engine equal to GPU. That is it. So now when I run this, the entire execution takes one second. So this is the speed up that you're getting when you're using a GPU. The one that I showed you given the constraints that I have with respect to resources, I used a data set of 2 GB. But if you keep increasing the size to say around 40 GB, so if you're playing around with a data set of 40 GB, then the amount of time taken for processing using a CPU and GPU is significantly different. So if you look at the difference, you can notice the amount of speed up that you can get by using a GPU as opposed to using a CPU only version of polars. Here engine equal to GPU is powering the entire GPU operation. You can go a bit further and you can define a GPU engine and save it into a variable called as GPU engine, specify the device ID. And if rapid scudf feels that it is not able to execute this entire piece of code in the GPU, it should basically raise an alert. That is where this particular engine initialization comes in handy. Okay. So there are some parts of code which execute really well on a CPU, which shouldn't be brought on a GPU, which is where this particular initialization comes in really handy. Okay. So I'll quickly run this particular piece of code as well. Now, Let's do some complex data analysis to understand the overall speed up that you can get in the entire activity. If I want to find the top flight routes based on origin, destination, month and airline that have the longest average flight distances and display only the top results. For such a use case, what you have here is this particular piece of code. So you have a group by operation across multiple columns. Then you're calculating the average value. Then you're performing a sort operation. Then you're collecting the five top five values. And then there is a collect command given that this is lazy execution that's happening. Now let me quickly run this. This is entirely running on a CPU and not a GPU. So this complex operation takes around six seconds on a CPU and here you have the origin, 
you have the destination airport the month in which this entire activity happened which airline was it and what was the distance okay now i'll carry out the same operation using a gpu and this activity has taken around 1.67 seconds imagine the speed up that you can get if you start using a bigger data set right so i'm using this particular data set just to fit into the memory constraints of google collab but with this approach if you have a high end gpu with you sky is literally the limit in terms of how you can get your computations done right the good part about using polars is you can write sql queries as well so if i have to find out the top 10 flight routes by airline origin destination and month that have the highest number of cancellations okay now here for this particular activity rather than using a python based approach what i'm doing is i'm using an sql based approach so i say select airline origin destination month and some cancelled as total cancelled so these are the columns that i'm selecting from this particular polars data frame i group by these columns and i order by this particular column again and i limit to only 10 values okay let's increase this to say 30 values here as well or let's say i keep this to 50 just just to show how the overall performance will be right so when i run this now let's execute this using the cpu version of polars so this entire activity takes around 5.26 seconds if i have to carry out this particular activity using a gpu it takes 1 second this is the power of using a gpu with polars well this is what i wanted to demonstrate today i wanted to show you the power of polars on a gpu using rapid scoo df and how it can kind of give you significant uplift in the performance when your data set size keeps increasing Thank you so much for watching this video.